Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kimball's Corner. Oh my God, this feels so old school. Today we're gonna be doing some some gray artwork. I'm feeling, you know, a little gray. Not emotionally, but you know, the skies are gray. Uh, we are going to be using some Jane Davenport mermaid markers. I've had these for at least five years. Hopefully they're still doing well. Uh, I'm also gonna be using the Jane Davenport Legends of the Sea gradient ink in Kraken. Well, here, let me show you. So these are the colors. We got that, that, and this one's like a gray green. I'm not sure where we're going with it. I don't know. I'm feeling like doing, I don't know, some kind of stormy face, like a woman with like the stormy hair, you know. It's been done a million times, but that's what I'm feeling like doing today. So let's just open the journal up, find the next clean page. I guess we'll just get started. Uh, I'll probably spray it down with a little bit of water. This will just help get the ink to spread. And gosh, I don't know. You know, we're just gonna make it up as we go. That's the most fun. Will there be mistakes? Probably. Will I point them out? Maybe. Oh, I'm also using Prismacolor colored pencils. I'm using all of the, well, all of my French grays. I do believe there are more versions of French gray and also black and white. You got the French grays, black and white, let's do it. They're like a warmer gray. It's gonna be like warm tones is what we're going for. But yeah, for this background, I'm thinking, I don't want it to be like a real looking face. I want it to be kind of, I wouldn't say cartoony, but you know, not so realistic, I guess. And have a long, let's take her neck this way. Shoulders, shoulders, gotta have some shoulders. That's always nice. We'll just fill all that in. Not so worried about shading just yet. Obviously that's the dark side because that's where I laid it down first. So let's roll with that. We can bring in a little eye socket, whatever. We're just gonna let that chill for a bit. And I don't really care. Like we're, if these all blend and blur together, we're totally fine with that. I do want though to keep a line around her I'm sure it'll blur and blend in some spots. Wow, mermaid markers are lovely. Take that to the edge. I can also come back because mermaid markers are very uh, water reactive. So I can come back over with water and spread it around even more if I want to, which I probably will. Give a little squeeze, get some ink to pour out. And now the hair. We just, it's gonna come down lower. I'm not sure yet. We're making it up as we go. And let's bring in this color, which is like a, it's like silvery, shiny. Ooh, that's fun. Cloud color. And we'll just let that blur and mix and do whatever it wants with these other colors. Bring it down a bit. Getting some kind of shape happening. Ooh. That is so fun, it's like painting with liquid metal. And, oh, and this is a, grade eight, a gradient ink, so it's gonna have different colors happening in there. That's why you're seeing like the weird variations and stuff. We are loving it. Bring this back up, kind of smudge around. Ooh, it was just, wow. That uh, silver is just creeping up the pen. So we're gonna clean that before we put it away. And then I'm just gonna use my paintbrush let me get these edges. The silver mermaid marker isn't as reactive to water when it dries. So keep that in mind. Rinse out that brush. I'm gonna dry it and try and do a little more detailing using the gradient ink. Okay, I don't love how streaky the silver laid down, but it's also nice. I'm gonna splash some water on it to get a little texture. Well, I'm gonna spray a little water. And it's got to soak in just a little bit to uh, reactivate the ink. And then I'll take a paper towel and we'll just kind of pull up some of that color. It'll give her some freckles, some sparkle in the sky. You know, it'll do something. Or it'll do nothing, really don't know. Ah, eh, we got stuff happening. But like I said, it's not gonna really reactivate where the uh, silver is, like all this up here, all this business. I'm, I'm tempted to pull out my gray gessos and white gesso and just kind of play with the hair a little bit, but I wanna add a second layer here and kind of refine the shape. 
I wanna refine the shape of her face a little bit, add a little shading. Kind of just block in some of these colors. Give her an ear, why not? She deserves it. Rinse the brush just a little bit to get some of the excess ink out and I can just kind of blur what's wet on the page a little easier without adding more color. All right, she's looking very alien-esque right now. Let's bring out the gessos. All right, so we have the opaque white and the cloud nine. Give them a shake. I have not used these in a very long time. Well, these colors in particular, especially. I use gessos all the time. All right. I do want, maybe I should just flop it down on the page rather than doing it this way. Because I do want to blend the colors. And also, these are gonna reactivate the mermaid markers underneath. So don't really know what we're gonna get. But we're going for kind of stormy clouds, something, I don't know. I feel like I should change brushes to a bigger one and a flat one. Cause this is drying very quickly. I just wanna keep it soft. And I might even try and squirt in a little of the mermaid ink. The mermaid marker ink. Let's see where that takes us. Definitely helps with adding a little bit of shading. We can kind of just blend it down into the rest of it down there. Add a little more up there. Where's Bob Ross when you need him, am I right? All right, it feels like it could use a little more softness over here. It looks a little streaky. I'm tempted to bring in black but also scared, but let's try. A little black there, a little black down here, a little black there. Hopefully that is not too much. Well, it's a very wet brush. A little bit too much on the brush. If it's not obvious, I don't paint clouds. But I also kind of want it to look like hair, just a little bit. This could work. I think we might be in a good place here. A little darker on the bottom. Let's add a little bit of white to the top and see if that'll help oomph the contrast up just a little bit. Add a couple of streaks in there. We can work with that. We can work with that. Let's set those aside. I don't know if I'll need them again, but they're there if I do. Let's get these brushes a good wash. All right, brushes are clean. Let's put the mermaid markers away. Got all those gorgeous colors. Put the ink away and give this a good dry. I'm kind of curious to see if I add some water up here, just little splats of it, if it'll pull the ink up through the acrylic. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. This is just getting experimental now. Give that just a minute. We'll see, I don't know if the acrylic is fully dry, so it might be able to pull up some of that color and just make weird splotches in the clouds. Definitely happening right there. But then I just need to wipe it away. Ooh, interesting. All right, fully drying it. All right, I think we're fully dry. 
feels dry, it feels good. We're gonna work with the colored pencils now. Let me get this stuff out of the way. Just organizing my pencils from lightest to darkest. All right, let's take a mid gray and kind of start planning out her face. Eyeball. Eyeball, let's give her kind of just a, maybe a squared off jaw, ear, and then eyebrow, just kind of the nose. And we'll do a little bit darker, and since it's darker here, we'll get a, a lip line in here, drawing the center of the lip line first. And then I'll draw the bottom lip shadow, like the little shadow underneath the lip, and then her upper lip. Darken the nostril. Ooh, it's very close to her nose. That's fine. She's not human. And let's see. I think I'm just gonna go right in with black for her eyes, although, hmm, maybe I'll make her eyes not that open, but they'll be nice and big. Somewhere in there. And then we'll just draw like a lash line and just whoop. Let's see, lash line and whoop. Close enough. We can just fill that in. And the other side, probably good. Normally I would take a picture with my phone and then flip the canvas to see if there's any mess ups, but I'm not gonna get that particular this time around. I'm just taking my other grays, drawing in some, drawing in her uh, eyelids. And let's see, she can be looking that way. A little shade in the eye. It's just a ball. And kind of blend that out. And then we use white. And now she's got some eyes, lovely. She can see what she's doing. Well, I guess you can't see yet, but she's getting there. I don't really wanna use white to highlight this side, so I'm using the lightest. French gray, and then I use white on this side, just because the light's hitting it a little bit stronger. And I'm gonna her, we'll just give her dark eyes, going in with black, and we'll draw the iris, make her look a little spooky ooky for just a second, and bring the shadow in from the eyelid. We'll give it a really heavy shadow. I mean, she's gonna have dark eyes anyway. And we'll come in with like a mid-tone. This is what, 70% French gray? Just add a little eye color in there. And then we'll take the lightest one. What is this? This is 10%. And kind of smudge and blur them all together. And then come in with white, just in the lightest. And you can add some little lines or whatever you like to do for your eyes. And then I can come back in with the black. 
we can darken it up. Add some little textury details. And darken up these lashes. Ooh. And then we'll add highlights later with a paint pen because, you know, it's more dramatic that way. Um, let's see. We'll just start with probably the darkest. It's a 90% French gray. We'll start with that shading and her eyebrows. Keep it simple. She's nonplussed about things. Can't be bothered. I really am tempted to bring in some color for like cheekies and stuff. I don't know that I really have like a gray pink though. I mean, I probably do. If I was doing this live, I would ask y'all what I should do. All right, we're just, we're gonna look. We're just gonna look, see if I have a gray pink in here. This could work. What is this color? Rosy beige. Do I have any down here? Mm, those are all pretty saturated. Well, let's see how this looks on this. You know, I think it'll work just a touch. Don't even know it. it's really gonna be noticeable. We'll add a little bit into the lips. And a little bit over here. And of course on the nose. Quite subtle, but it's there. All right, back to my dork. Add in some, some just nice edge lines. Keep it sketchy though. I mean, you don't have to, but I like to keep it pretty sketchy. I'm not looking for a finished piece look. That's too much pressure. We'll go a lighter color on this side. That was a little too dark. Bring in her clavicle. And a uh, little tendon to help hold her neck up. Gotta have that. A little shading in here. And we'll focus more on the face now. Might be a little too light. I've mixed up all my colors, so now they're just, I have to actually look for the one I want to use. Do white on that side, where the light's hitting it the most. Same with her nose. Let's just add the white in now. Definitely over here, but this is all just kind of light anyway. And then just under the shadow would be the lightest part, because that's where the light's gonna hit strongest right after it hits the hair. And on her tendon, no, the I mean, it's so light down here already that you can't really see what's going on. a little ooky mooky in there. Let's see what we can do. Mm, 
Let's see. A shadow under her cheeky bone, but I don't want it too dark. The lighting's not that dramatic. Come back in, we'll lighten it up just a little bit, and then we'll go even lighter over this one. Just kind of blend it all in. the white on her lips and then on this part of the lip that kind of pushes out and a little mid-tone actually let's do black for her lip line and that'll give me a little extra space to work with the, the shadows All right, some lippies are done. Take the black under her nose. Give it a nice harsh shadow. A nice black nostril. And we can come in with a dark French gray. Add some dramatic shading, kind of clean things up as we go. Mush it all down with a lighter one. Just try and make all the uh, colors look a little harmonious. Blend a little, blend it all together just a little bit. Definitely want it lighter on the top of her nose, but not white bright. But just enough to help it stand out. We're getting there. She's coming together. Let's take like a mid-tone. You can add the underside of her eyeball. It's not actually like eye bags per se, but you know, it's the bottom of her eyeball. She's gotta have a little shadow down there. But just a little, our girl gets enough sleep at night. Now it's hard because like on an actual like human face, the eye corner of this eye usually comes right above here. So there's like this, it's just pulled further apart. So it's like a little weird to shade in that area. But you know, again, she's not real. So we make it up, try to make it look pretty decent. Not perfect. Add a little highlight in there. I go over all of that. Hope it brings it together. And let's see, let's take kind of a mid-tone and add some extra shadow to up here from her hair. And then we can soften that up just a little bit with a little bit of a lighter shade. You don't want to go too light because that'll just get rid of the shading. But uh, this helps calm down the texture, which is what I like to get rid of. I don't really love texture with the colored pencils. This I don't mind for whatever reason. I was like, it happened with the inks. 
but you know, if you really want to, you can layer up your colored pencils or paint over it or whatever it is you do to get rid of those things. I'm not gonna worry so much about uh, making the colors perfect down here, but I do wanna like, as it gets further away from the face, it'll become less detailed, but I do wanna keep it similar to the face. I wanna fade it away so it's not like a stark contrast of a sketch versus a more finished piece. It's just like the further we go down, the sketchier it can look. Just adding some wispies to make it look like hair. So her hair's kind of got this like bluish undertone to it. Sorry, I just looked at how dark her other eyebrow was. It looks a little, a little much. Just lighten that up a scooch. Let's bring in the black a little more down here. I could actually just add a little bit of a, a black sketchiness to all of it. Just keep it very subtle, but there, it's just, it's there, but it's not really like visible, I guess, until a closer inspection. So now with her hair, of course I'm gonna add some little lightning bits. And I'll start with this. I kind of want it to look like either she has, ooh, I don't know, there's so many options. I could have just like hanging strings with like stars and she could have lightning coming out of her, or she could have like lightning earrings. That's very Storm from X-Men if I give her lightning earrings. Oh, take a sip of coffee, think about it. Hmm, no decisions yet. Could do something very fun with that. I could add some neon colors in here. That might just throw the whole piece off, I don't know. What do I want to do? You guys help. Let's... If I do lightning, or, ooh, I kind of want, uh oh, I think Rocky took my ruler, so I'm gonna have to find something else. What do we got here? This thing. So, just trust this. Okay, so I hung some little or I drew in some little hanging lines. Maybe I'll have one here. Okay. Make it up as we go, hope for the best. That's my motto. We're gonna just do little stars. Hello. Great, I drew a wonky star. I guess I could just make it a little chonkier and try and cover that up. Okay. Okay, now I think I wanna take this and kind of electrify the lines, maybe. And we'll go back in and we'll just add some little extra bits. Try and make it look a little more like lightning or electricity at least. Well, that's kind of fun. Kind of enjoy that. Let's let that dry and I might add a little glow around it. Try and keep it subtle. Oh yes. Definitely changes texture when you get to the gesso. So just be aware if you're coloring on two different surfaces. Cause down here I have like the inky paper and up here I have like the paint and gesso. And it definitely, the gesso has a tooth so it'll, it gives tooth to the paper like a velvety texture which will grab the pencil lead a lot more. Don't know if this is really adding to it but I'm enjoying doing it. And for me that's what art's about. Just enjoying it. I'm very tempted and I'm going to add in some neon yellow after I sharpen it. Don't know why, but I just, I feel like it could 
add just a little bit, keep it quite subtle and not everywhere. But it can be my pop of color on the piece, even though I'm keeping it quite subtle. Of course, now I wanna add it in here. Maybe just a little in the eyes. It won't really show up actually because it's so waxy. Well, I guess it does a little bit. All right, need to put it away. Otherwise I'm just gonna go crazy with it. Uh, let's get the white paint pen and add some little water line to her eye. It's basically where it's her lower eyelid and it's just light reflecting. I do need to add a little pink, just here-ish. For tear duct. And then, hmm, just add a little highlight. And a little bit on her eyelid. Oof, I just want to go crazy with it. Well, I could give her some freckles. That's simple and subtle. And some on the shoulders. Kinda want to give it a spritz with white acrylic spray. Um, but I will cover her face. And that will probably knock back a little bit. Let's dry it and find out. All right, they're still a little wet. I think I'm gonna come back in with the gray, oh gosh, was this the one I used? Mermaid marker. I think that's the one. And I'm just gonna, I don't know, I don't like this white line here anymore. So we're just gonna come in and paint over it and I did use pencil down here. Hopefully it's not too obvious. Probably be fine. And to help that blend in just a little bit, I'm gonna dab some water on my finger and just kind of flick at it. And I'm gonna pull that up just so there's some speckles there and it kind of blends into the background a little more. And also, kind of feel like the little stars need a little glow around them, a little healthy green glow. I feel like I need to come back in here with the white now and add the rest of the star. Which I will do right now. enough. Ooh, I think she might be done. I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope that if you decide to create a stormy woman that she turns out just the way you want her to. I thoroughly enjoy her. She's got a little snowstorm happening up top. She's got some stars falling down with some electrical cords. What's not to love? All right, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you next time. Bye, you guys.